everyone, and welcome back to a Matt Lown Kerbal Space Program Christmas special episode. And why is it a Christmas special episode? Because it's Boxing Day, I think. This is like I'm recording this on the 16th of December, but my intention is to upload this in 10 days' time, which is the day after Christmas Day. So I thought, why not make this a Christmassy themed video? And I thought about kind of how I could make this video Christmas themed. I've done a literal Santa and his reindeer sleigh uh, SS2 mission before, which is about as Christmassy as you can get. So I was I racked my brains in terms of what I could do for a Christmas themed mission. And then I thought back that almost exactly four years ago, the 21st of January, 2017, which is four years ago, as scary as that sounds, I launched a single launch surface base to Elu, and I haven't visited it since. And Elu is a dwarf planet that was added to version 0.18.2 of Kerbal Space Program as a Christmas gift to the Kerbal Space Program community. So the well, you know, Elu is a fairly Christmassy destination, not only because of that, but because it's a very snowy planet it's very icy i know it's not like literal snow but you know it's a snowy looks like a snowball very christmasy location um it was added as a christmas gift the base that i put on that surface was very soon after christmas 2017 well i guess christmas 2016 i say that get it right so why not send a little christmas care package to that base you know those kerbals have been without contact for four years uh, it'd be nice for them to, you know, see another friendly face. And a lot of content has been added to the game since I made that video. You know, we've got loads of new parts, we've got deployable stuff, we've had two DLCs get added. So I thought, let's just uh, send a little rover to the base, which I've now built, as well as the transfer, transfer stage. And we'll also send some deployable uh, science experiments as well, to kind of populate the area around the base. Now I'm just going to quickly crossfade to... Uh, the launch because I finished building the interesting part of the vehicle which is the transfer stage and the lander uh, it's a fairly generic looking launch vehicle I'm guessing you could probably figure out how it was built without needing to watch the time lapse if you I mean if you really if you really do want some further elaboration there is a download to the craft file in the description if you would like to do that but here we are launching the craft it wasn't a particularly uh, efficient gravity turn I'm just gonna say that right now the launch profile wasn't very optimal but uh, it turned out I actually engineered a bit too much fuel into the launch vehicle, so it didn't really matter. Efficiency was not a uh, something I really, really needed to go for. And, you know, the aerodynamic stresses being inflicted on this uh, launch vehicle are quite low because I end up going for a very steep ascent. So we end up going, uh, leaving the atmosphere very quickly after launch. We don't spend that much time building up our horizontal velocity in the atmosphere, which is uh, less efficient. But it does mean that the actual fairing, well, I guess the whole rocket, in fact, is subjected to less less heating which is safer and that's an important thing to consider because i haven't actually added a launch escape system to this launch vehicle and sometimes not all the time but sometimes i like to uh, incorporate some sort of launch escape vehicle into my rockets just as a kind of from a realism point of view i know launch escape systems are by and large fairly redundant in kerbal space program i know there are exceptions like for people that play without quick saves and without reverting flights etc but for the most part i'd say most players play with revert to uh, revert to launch or revert to vehicle assembly building that option enabled so it's all a bit of a moot point but i um sometimes just like to have launch skip systems for my own sort of sense of yeah this rocket is you know it's it's safe it would work and it's quite satisfying to know that you don't necessarily have to rely on the revert to launch feature just in case you do experience a rapid unplanned disassembly during any aspect of your flight really uh, but now we've obviously left the atmosphere so all of that risk is behind us for now so now i can just reconfigure the vessel uh, to put the lander at the front of the ship and then complete our circularization burn bit of a danger move now i think about it uh, probably would have been safer to circularize first and then reorient the ship but i didn't want to leave debris uh, left in low curb in orbit which would have been the case if I had just circularized before reorienting the ship because the stage below us doesn't have any means of deorbiting itself. So that being said I don't really care that much about leaving debris in space because this is an old save file. This is Matlon Space and Science Agency that um, served as the space agency for all my missions throughout 2016 and 2017. I believe Laon Aerospace the first one uh, was created in 2018, then now I suppose the second one was 2019. Uh, so, yeah, it's a fairly 
fairly old save file at this point. Now what's interesting is that you'll kind of see when we get to the Elu surface base that a lot of the old legacy parts like the old um, 2.5 meter uh, crew cabin that's actually featured in the lander can of this vessel um, the legacy part is present on the Elu surface base. It served as like the top of a tower on the surface base as like a lookout point but what's interesting is it's, it's still the old texture so the old texture is still present in the game and I knew this was the case for a lot of the parts so that legacy craft would still work but it's kind of cool to just to see it and think wow yeah KSP's come a long way since uh, this mission was flown. I feel like 2017 my goodness what a long time ago when you think about it I mean for me I feel like so much has changed in my life I've moved house twice uh, I've, I've bought a house in that time uh, I've been I've been through a, I've been through a new PC I bought a new PC since then. Um, I remember my PC at the time was quite cutting edge and quite new and fast. And now it's like in my attic and I've, I've got a brand new PC. And it's just, I feel like a lot has changed, you know, just life. Life be just be like that, doesn't it? <laughs> um, I guess I could talk about the mission, right? <laughs> uh, I split my escape burn from Kerbin into three. Uh, just because we've not got very good thrust weight ratio. We've got a fairly high wet and dry mass. I guess I could just say mass, right? We've got a fairly high mass and only three nuclear engines powering us. So while we are efficient, we don't have very good thrust to weight ratio. So all the burns are going to be doing to get to Elu are going to be quite long. And uh, long burns mean that we're not going to spend much time burning at exactly Kerbin periapsis. Uh, the the Oberth effect states that for prograde burns, you are at your most efficient when burning as close to periapsis as possible. So by splitting the burn into three, as in two 450-ish meter per second burns to get ourselves to the edge of Kerbin's sphere of influence, and then a third and final burn to do the rest of the way up to Elu. Doing it that way means that we are maximizing the amount of time spent burning at Kerbin periapsis and ultimately uh, doing a slightly more efficient flight, which um, is kind of weird to say as I'm transitioned to my next point in that I didn't really wait for a good Elu transfer window. I just like opened the tracking station, uh, saw that Elu was kind of sort of in a transferable state as that I could easily get an encounter with it and uh, just decided to go for it. The optimal transfer window for an Elu mission is uh, if you were to draw a line from Kerbin to the sun to Elu, the angle that form should be about 97 degrees and I launched at a time when it was probably about sort of I don't know between 85 and 90 degrees on the nav ball so it was just after the optimal transfer point but I didn't want to wait the years and years and years it would take for me to get back into an optimal Elu transfer window, especially because the crew of the surface base, they've waited long enough. They want their Christmas presents. Gosh darn it. So I said, let's just launch it. Just accept that we're going to have a terrible encounter and I'll add a bit more Delta V to the transfer stage to make up for it. Uh, and like I say, that's kind of a weird explanation to give after I just gave you a nice detailed thing as to why I did three burns at Kerbin perhaps just to do a nice efficient transfer when actually the transfer itself was uh, inefficient by default. <laughs> And oh my goodness, here we are at Elu already! Uh, it's very unusual for me to get to the uh, destination planet less than 10 minutes into a video. I feel like I usually show the entirety of the time-lapse build of my vessels. I'm starting to feel that, you know, actually really do I need to show the construction of the entire launcher when really the payload is the only thing that's going to dramatically vary between uh, craft to craft. Uh, generally, I'll just encase everything in a big fairing and then just use the big fuel tanks and a bunch of the big engines to form the ascent stage. Uh, and I don't think viewers really need to watch that part of the build process. And I feel like it, I, I think, I think personally, the time lapse build of this particular craft was the best way of presenting it. I think going forward, that's what I'm going to do a bit more often is maybe just showcase the actual construction of the uh, upper stage, the payload, rather than showcasing the entirety of the launch craft. Now, there are going to be exceptions to this, of course. For example, my single uh, launch International Space Station mission had quite an interesting launch vehicle. There are a few logistical challenges to overcome when constructing that rocket. So I think uh, something like that, it would be interesting to show the uh, construction process for the launch vehicle. But I think generally, by and large, I don't really need to show it anymore. But what do you guys think? Let me know down below. And hey, how it was with doing comment interaction and all that. How was your uh, how was your holiday season? I'm being inclusive of all faiths here, of course. Like, uh, how 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 are you? It's weird, isn't it? You know, let's let's be real. There's the caveat of it's 2020 <laughs> at the moment, and uh, you know, uh, it's weird times for everyone, I'm sure. But I hope everyone was able to make the most of their holiday time anyway. 
And, uh, and yes, it sounds like I'm being really insincere when I say this because I think I just naturally sound sarcastic, but I, I do mean it with sincerity. I wish everyone all the best and a happy new year when that time comes. And hey, you know, it can't be any worse than 2020. Uh, famous last words. Anyway, as you can see, I've transferred uh, Valentina and L L L L L Kerman into the lander. I didn't even check her name. Uh, it's just an engineer, Kerman. I don't know where Bill Kerman was. Uh, I couldn't add him to the, the vessel because he wasn't available in the crew roster. So he's off on some adventure probably. So this was the next engineer I had in this save file. So she's going to be here. The reason I brought an engineer is so I can repair the wheels of this rover just in case you know, the wheels break. Although happily they did and also, you know, I think if you use an engineer to deploy the uh, power generating deployable science units as well as the communications dish, I believe they work a bit more efficiently, like the electric components produce a bit more electricity and the communications dish maybe doesn't use as much power. I don't know. I should have really looked this up, but hey, there you go. There's an exercise for the reader. And uh, I brought Valentina so that we can create maneuver nodes. Uh, without needing a connection to the Kerbal Space Center, which actually now I think about it is uh, bad justification because I've just realized that I don't even have Comnet enabled in this save file. And actually, there's a massive great relay dish on the ELU base, so we can probably use that to get a connection to the surface uh, to, to the Kerbal Space Center regardless. So really, it probably would have been better for me to bring a scientist Kerbal rather than a pilot Kerbal so that when we deploy the deployable science units, they generate a bit more science, which I'm pretty sure, which I'm like 85% sure is the case when you use a scientist to deploy them. Uh, so really, this mission has been a bit of a mess all round. There are so many things I could have done to improve it, but what you're going to do, guys, it's Christmas. You know, it's, it's not a time to acknowledge my personal flaws. It's a time to get drunk. I eat chocolate, right? That's <laughs> that's uh, that's just the kind of internet role model I am, really. Anyway, here we are on the uh, horrible surface of Elu. Oh, by the way, I'd set my uh, control point as the wrong thing. Well, I think the control point of the rover by default is the top docking port, and I didn't realize at the time because I'm an idiot. Uh, I right-clicked the, uh, the command pod and pressed control point forward, but I didn't actually press control from here. So the center point of control, or whatever terminology is correct, is the docking port. Until right this second, and then I realized and changed it. Now it handles like a dream. I really like this um, rover. It came out really nicely. It's a bit of a, it's a bit on the bulky side, which can be a little bit tricky when it comes to landing the rover. Like I always, I, I don't know. I really like the challenge of trying to land cumbersome rover designs. It's always interesting trying to come up with a solution. And in this case, I kind of went for a curiosity slash perseverance rover landing deployment style kind of so it was kind of like a sky crane where the lander above the rover wouldn't actually land with the rover it would literally drop the rover really gently onto the surface and then fly away but rather than what happened with curiosity and hopefully what successfully happens with perseverance when it lands uh, it didn't just fly away and crash somewhere it then gently landed next to the rover obviously it had to happen that way because it's going to get our kerbals back to the mothership and get back to kerbin and here we are actually on the inside of the elu base and you can see what i mean that that's the uh that's that's that that's what the lander can used to look like and you can see in the background in fact uh, not necessarily just the rover, but the the Elu lander that you can no longer see. So this is this is great, isn't it? You can see the difference in between the legacy design and the new design. Uh, it's one of the things where it's really really come a long way. And I said earlier that here we are on the horrible surface of Elu because I realised this might not have been the best choice of destination for a video because Elu is now the only celestial body in the entire game to still have the ugly ugly legacy texture for its surface. The surface of all the other planets in the game now look so amazing that uh, Elu just kind of sticks out like a sore thumb. By the way, you may, miss, may have seen me here struggling to place that lamp on the surface. The Kerbals always drop it from a height that causes it to topple over because it's so... Yeah, I'm trying again now and it just keeps toppling over. Like, stop dropping it. Just pick it up and place it on the surface. It's a tripod. It, ca it You could do it, just stop. So anyway, for the second one, I just gave up. <laughs> so uh, we can just continue placing all of the science units. And I think I messed up a bit. I accidentally brought two experiment control stations, which is uh, a bit overkill. I think I, it's been so long since I actually tried to do these experiments. I'm doing the air quotes thing properly. Do you need, can you do everything with just the one uh, experiment control station or if you've got lots of science experiments do you need more than one I feel like I'm asking so many questions this video and really I should have just looked this stuff up before 
uh, before doing the mission. But really, this is all secondary to the mission itself, which is just visiting our Kerbals on the Elu base for Christmas, saying hello to them. By the way, I did the newer EVA science experiment as well, where we smashed the banana. Got to get that out of the way. Uh, there we are. That That's it done. Uh, so we're actually going to leave the rover here. Not that I intended to ever bring it back. Although I guess we could because it's it could attach to the lander again via a docking port. But I thought let's leave the let's leave the rover here. So it can be a nice way of the Kerbals stuck on the surface base. After all this time, they can finally go and explore other biomes on the surface of Elu. And hey, you know, squad, whenever you get round to adding the new texture revamp for Elu, you know, maybe, guys, I'll revisit Elu, revisit this surface space and see... It'll be like another... This surface space is kind of like the the way we can measure the changes that have happened. So now we've got uh, new parts next to the base, which is built of the old parts. But it's still sitting on the old surface texture. So eventually it'll get a new surface texture. And then we can go back and then we can kind of see again. Then we can compare how it looked in the 2017 video, how it looked in the 2020 video, and how it looked in the 2021 video. Hopefully 2021, right? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, I probably won't. I'm just saying it'd be a nice, it's a nice thought experiment, right? Anyway, we have now reunited with the mothership and you saw me executing the, uh, the trademarked Lown Lazy method of docking just there where you just select each ship individually and then press, you know, automatically point towards the target on the automatic SAS menu of the nav ball. Do that for both ships and make sure they've both set the other ship's docking port as the target. And hey presto, they'll just lock on to each other automatically and docking is dead easy. Now what I could do at this point is undock the Elu lander and just have it deorbit itself because it does have a probe core on board so it does have the means of deorbiting itself but it's a long old journey back to Kerbin and I thought if we just leave the lander can attached it allows a bit more interior space for our Kerbals to uh you know move around on their uh, very long journey back to Kerbin. Although it's not too long we're going to get an encounter with Kerbin uh, before completing one solar orbit because it's fairly easy to force a Kerbin encounter from the height of Elu. What I tend to do is just drag out a maneuver node and just play around with it a bit until I get like a rough encounter with Kerbin like it's not perfect and then I just do that burn and then I then make a second maneuver node where I try and get things a little bit more accurate and ultimately get the Kerbin encounter which is what I'm currently plotting here. Uh, I think I'm just trying to be, you know, all precise and perfectionist about it and trying to get my periapsis at a good height to perform an aero capture. Um, it, it's very hard to get it completely dead accurate using the stock move node maker. And I know there is now like a an integrated version of precise node, but I don't know, I never bothered using it and I can't be bothered to relearn it now. And I think from a video making standpoint, it's a bit more kind of visually clear what I'm doing using the old maneuver node maker maneuver no makeup <laughs> uh so that's what that's another reason why i don't use the uh the in air quotes precise node feature of kerbal space program i don't even know how it works i know i've tried it out at one point and thinking oh yeah this is really intuitive and and good and i'm going to use this and then i never did use it and now i've forgotten how it works <laughs> so not sure what kind of message i was trying to say really with that but here we are at kerbins it didn't matter it all worked out in the end i'm going to quickly undock the two vessels here and then val is going to manually remove the science from the lander can just before re-entry and then i forgot to switch off the nuclear engines and things got a bit too close for comfort but hey we're getting a little uh premature new year's eve fireworks show and, uh, you know, it's it's COVID, isn't it? So we're not going to really see any real firework displays this year. So this is my present to you guys. Wow, look at that. I set out to bring presents to my Kerbals on Elu, but really, I brought a present to all of us in a way. And if that's not a profound message that definitely warrants giving the video a like and subscribing to me and buying my merchandise, and follow me, you know, and then, then what is, what is really? Uh, and if you want to see more videos like this one, in fact, on the left-hand side is a link to the original video where I launched that Elu surface base. The right-hand side is a video chosen for you by YouTube's recommendation algorithm based on your viewing habits. Uh, there's other links to stuff as well. I guess you know how end screens work at this point now, guys. Anyway, I hope you had a very nice Christmas if you do so celebrate that and have an excellent new year. Goodbye.